Good afternoon. My name is Steve Gregorian. I'm the president and CEO of the Detroit Economic Club. Welcome to today's 15th annual sold-out meeting of the Detroit Tigers. <laughs> Detroit roots for sure, and the DEC definitely roots for our Tigers. Over 500 Detroit Tiger fans strong here today. We are, hands down, the best baseball city in America. Give yourselves a round of applause. I especially want to welcome our DEC members. If you're not a DEC member yet, allow me five seconds to myth bust. There's no application or nomination process for becoming a member. There's no job level or salary requirement. We're looking for people that want to build their networks and hear from thought leaders on our stage. You can sign up at econclub.org. As we get started, I would ask you to please take a moment to silence your cell phones. And if you've been with us before, you know we always begin with a pledge and a prayer. So I invite you to stand and join me as we honor our country with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. And kindly remain standing as our invocation today will be delivered by Father Bill Murphy from Loyola High School in Detroit, who is right down here in front. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we beg your blessings for the Detroit Economic Club now in its 89th year. May it continue to thrive as a beacon of dialogue and progress. For our Tigers, in gratitude for 122 seasons and 9,455 wins, may our team play with infectious joy, moving hearts in Detroit and around the world. Finally, we pray for peace. May our food and conversation energize us to love and serve, especially those facing hunger, loneliness, or danger. We ask these of you, Lord, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Bill. You may all be seated now. I do want to take a moment and thank a couple of organizations for making this day possible. It's never, ever lost on us at the Detroit Economic Club. What a privilege an honor it is to host the Tigers each and every year. I'm not sure, quite frankly, I've heard of another major league club that does something as cool as they do for the DEC. So I want to thank Chris Illich, Chris McGowan, the Illich organization, and certainly Tigers players, coaches, and executives for this incredible opportunity. So please join me in a round of applause thanking them. And a special welcome and thank you to manager A.J. Hinch. It's his first in-person DEC meeting, and he was kind enough to do this via Zoom last year for us. So thank you, A.J. We really appreciate it. <laughs> and of course, I want to say a special welcome to our broadcast talent for giving up their time to be with us today. We are so lucky here in this town to watch and listen to Tiger games all season and summer long with the incredible radio and TV announcers we have right here. It doesn't get any better than these guys. Dan Dickerson, Jim Price on radio. <laughs> Matt Shepard, Jack Morris on Valley Sports TV. Welcome and, and thanks for being with us, guys. On top of all of this excitement for the day, each of you are going to receive a gift from the Detroit Tigers. On your way out today, you'll receive a 2022 Detroit Tigers yearbook. So thanks to the Tigers for being so generous. And if you've been with us before, real quickly, you know we love having high school and college students with us at each meeting. They're here courtesy of our generous corporate sponsors. Their morning already began with a special student-only reception with Al and Chris. And I just want to take a moment to let you know who is with us. We've got students from Carlson High School, thanks to Julia and Scout from Eckert. Students from Loyola High School, thanks to Deloitte. Two groups from Albion College, my alma mater, way to go, Britons. Uh, one of the groups, Strategic Staffing Solutions, thank you, Cindy and Paul. And then Clark Hill brought the second group, thanks to Nadine and Mickey, so please join me in a round of applause to welcome those students and thank the sponsors. 
I want to make a special note of the group from Albion College. I think you'd like to know about this. These students are here part of Albion's Ford Institute School for a Public Purpose, and they arrived in Detroit Monday for a week-long immersion in the city of Detroit. They all finished their school last Friday. School year is over, right? If it was me back then, I'd be in my flip-flops already. But they, it was important enough for them to continue their education and spend time with us this week. I had the pleasure of having dinner with them Monday night. I can assure you folks, our future is in good hands with these people. So thanks again to the Albion folks. A couple things on your table, our seasonal lineup. Okay, you Spartans on May 23rd, right here in this room. We're going to have, oh, I like it, way to go. We're going to have coaches, oh, Coach Tucker, Athletic Director Alan Holler right here. And on June 8th, if you're a summer beverage fan and who isn't a summer beverage fan, we'll host the Anheuser-Busch CEO for a fireside chat followed by a summer beverage tasting. It's a late afternoon event and the CEO is going to stick around and have a beer with everybody. So we look forward to seeing you at those events. And finally on your table, I see some of you looking at our sponsor brochure. Please take a minute to check those out. We would not be here if it wasn't for the generosity of those corporate sponsors. They make it possible for us to do things like this. If you're a tweeter, tweet today using at Debt Economic Club. If you want to ask a question to a specific player, those instructions are on your table, and you can use your smart fun phone to do that. So, okay, enough from me. On with the program. Last January, Chris McGowan arrived in Detroit as president and CEO of Illich Sports and Entertainment. He's moved here from Portland, Oregon where among other duties, he was president of the NBA's Portland Trail Blazers. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get on with the program and give a warm DEC welcome to Chris McGowan. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Uh, not only thanks for today, but uh, thanks for helping me as I've uh, welcomed myself to Detroit over the last little while. I appreciate that, and I think I heard someone um, cheering for the trailblazers out there, so that's always good as well. Thank you. I always support former teams, but it's an honor to be here today um, in the Motor City Casino with everyone. As mentioned, this is my uh, first year with the organization, and I'm really excited to be in Detroit. I've had the fortune to work in a, a lot of different cities, and when you come into a new market, you do a lot of research, and you look at the calendar of events that you're going to be going to over the first couple months of being somewhere, and this event really stood out to me. Um, we're all big believers in engaging uh, deeply with the business community, and we're all excited to be here today. Also, in my years of being in professional sports, um, it's not often you get the opportunity in season during a long uh, spell of games to have the entire team here. And for that, I want to thank our team and give them a round of applause for coming here today. <clears throat> I also want to thank AJ and Al for making this possible as well. So thanks to them, too. Thank you. I mean, there's a big reason we do it. Uh, we want to connect with the business community. And we believe at Illich Sports and Entertainment that one of our big responsibilities is to use our platform to connect and inspire people in the community that we serve. Uh, so we're just excited to take uh, it, it, be here today. Um, so thanks again for letting us come here. Uh, when I came back uh, to Detroit, when I came to Detroit in December, we announced the formation of Illich Sports and Entertainment. Now, that's the company that brings all of our brands together. Um, it's the Detroit Tigers, the Detroit Red Wings, and our concert company called 313 Presents. Um, and it goes without saying, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of you probably experienced either one of those companies or one of those events uh, over the past year. Um, and for that support, we definitely thank everyone here. Uh, so thanks for supporting our organization. Um, so I speak for myself, uh, Chris Illich, uh, Al Avila, and all the Tigers here today, and say thank you. Uh, we feel your support and we feel your passion, and it, it's what drives us on a daily basis to create a winning organization and uh, an experience when you come to our venues that's second to none. Um, so with that being said, we're going to get uh, started here. Uh, I know everyone's uh, excited to hear from everyone up on the dais, including me as the new guy. Uh, so I'm going to kick it uh, back and we're going to get things started here. So thank you and go Tigers. All right, folks, you listen to these guys on a nightly basis. Please welcome Dan Dickerson, Jim Price. Thank you, Steve. 
Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks to the Economic Club for hosting this lunch every year. We are so happy to be back in the same room with all of you. <laughs> you know, Zoom didn't quite cut it last year. It was fine, but it's great to see all your smiling faces. And I tell you, having fans back at the ballpark these last two years, you realize just how important you all are to every night at Comerica Park. I want to thank all of you in the win, as well as the men and women of our local business community, students, prospective business leaders of our community, for joining us here today as we reestablish this wonderful tradition. Uh, one quick announcement. Great to be with you once again. But now, when the Tigers exit the room near the end of the event, please stay in your seats and you won't want to miss today's raffle items. Write these down. Spencer Torgerson, autographed baseball. Javi Baez, autographed Tigers jersey, and Miguel Cabrera, autographed bat. How's that? So stick around. <laughs> this past offseason, the Tigers added several established veteran players to an organization that was just starting to bear the fruits of a reinvigorated farm system. So before we introduce our first panel discussion of the day, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the men who are now wearing the Old English D. Now time for our spotlight discussion. Let's meet the men sitting before you. Now in his fourth full season as the Tigers television play-by-play -play voice on Bally Sports, Matt Shepard. <laughs> Hall of Fame pitcher, 1984 World Series champion, as well as a color analyst on Bally Sports, Jack Morris. <laughs> he first joined the Tiger front office 20 years ago last month. He is now in his seventh. Full season as the Tigers Executive Vice President of Baseball Operations and General Manager, Al Avila. And in his ninth season as a Major League Manager, second with the Detroit Tigers, please welcome A.J. Hinch. Afternoon, everybody, and thanks for coming. Before we get rolling here with Al and A.J., just some recognition for one of the finest right-handed hitters in the history of the game. We get a chance to watch him for 15 years here in Detroit. There's only three people in the history of Major League Baseball who have 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, and 600 doubles. Hank Aaron, Albert Pujols, and Miguel Cabrera. The man who first recognized that type of talent is to my right, Al Avila. How proud are you to be able to see him do these things in a Tigers uniform? Well, I knew it all along when I saw him when he was 15 years old. <laughs> but <clears throat> You got some lottery numbers for me, by the way? <laughs> no, uh, obviously, um, watching his career the whole time and, and here, for the most part, in Detroit, it's been um, a pleasure to see him not only grow as a baseball player, but as a man. And uh, the maturity has, uh, you know, developed over the years. So, um, and the leadership that he's brought to our teams over the years, uh, during the good times, and more importantly, really during the bad times and the rebuild, uh, he's been there for everybody. Al, as long as we are at an economic club and it's a business-oriented uh, gathering here today, I thought I'd ask you a question that I have never heard you answer. I'm sure you've been asked before. You're a general manager. You've got to negotiate a salary with your son. How did that go? <laughs> well, quite frankly, it didn't go very well. Um, so, so the story goes, the, the year after he became an all-star, um, and he was still arbitration eligible, um, and we got guys over there, and Sam Menzing and Jay Sartori, and, and my other son, Alan, that kind of handles our arbitration cases. Uh, they never came to an agreement, so we just had to renew the contract. So it goes all the way back to then. So uh, those negotiations didn't go very well. It's great to have A.J. Hinch here in person. He is one of the best communicators you will ever be around. I don't know if I've ever met anyone who watches as much baseball as he does. But you told me the other day you're an encourager by nature, or, or baseball coaches and managers are. How does that help you during a, a challenging time like right now? Yeah, well, these are, I mean, obviously, you look at the group behind us, um, you got to believe before it happens. And if you look at the back of these baseball cards, they are incredible players. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, 
Um, we don't have time to dwell on what's happened in the past. The first 30 days um, doesn't have to define us. It does define what you've done to this point. But we've got to bring energy every day as a staff. We've got to be positive. We've got to figure out if today is the day um, that things start going in the right direction. We are uber talented. We've got players that have won before. We've got a great process in place. We've got to go out and play the games and see what happens. But I'm going to believe in these guys and have their back until the end. And what you've seen um, over the course of my, at least my experience, is you'll see players will respond to that. Um, they don't need any more, um, you know, any more pressure than is already applied at this level. They don't need any more angst than already is, is, is directed whenever you line out to center 110 miles an hour with the bases loaded. Like, this group believes this group's going to be better, um, and it's going to start with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, the attitude that our staff brings and, and the players respond to. AJ, you born a uniform that says manager. You've worn a uniform that was a former catcher and player. Try to go back in time and ask yourself, what would a AJ former player ask his manager in these situations, number one? And number two, what would AJ the manager be telling his former catcher, AJ? Yeah, well, AJ the player wouldn't have given any hitting tips. I would tell you that much. <laughs> um, if you can check the back of that baseball card, and it's ugly. So. What, what I will tell you is, is you want consistency out of everybody. So if we are prepared, um, we, we show up ready to win. We have an understanding of what our opponent's going to do. As a player, I just want my, my manager and my coaches to be in the trenches with me. It's easy to sit in my chair and say, um, you know, why do we make that play or not make that play? Or why do, we, why do we hit this pitch and not that pitch? The observation part of baseball is super simple. That's why all of you guys are probably experts too is we, we watch and we see and we get to respond to whatever happens. When you're the player and you're in the trenches and you are there grinding and you've got 98 neck high and we're in, at your face maybe and then the next one's a breaking ball, it's a hard sport. And so as a, the player that I, as a player, I would want some, some understanding how difficult it is and then I want to be pushed to the point of preparing to, to the greatest extent. Same with the mound. When you're on that island on the mound, we got a, we have a tremendous pitching staff. Our bullpen's been tremendous. Our rotation's been challenged, been very, very good. We've had young kids come up and pitch well. When you're on that island, it's you and the, you, the ball, and that hitter. You know, you got a little catcher back there that's trying to help you. But so, as an as a as a person in the trenches in the dugout, I will never take for granted how hard this game is. Success, failure, anywhere in between. Um, we've got to keep that perspective to keep to keep the team together. While you, while you navigate 162 games, which is not defined by 30. It's defined by 162. We're going to play them all. We'll see at the end of the year where we're at. Al, he just mentioned the young players. You've had a number of them make their major league debut. You'll have another one tonight. Joey Wentz starts tonight um, against Oakland. When you see some of these young guys come up and contributing the way they are, Alex Fajardo yesterday, for example, uh, how encouraging has that been to you and, and your staff? It is, and actually after the game last night, A.J. and I uh, were in his office, and we were discussing really how blessed we are with our pitching. And, and we were sitting there, and we were like, you know, there's so many clubs out there that would, that would die right now uh, for the pitching that we have. Not only at the present time at the major league level, but the guys that we have coming, the guys that have been coming. So, you know, we're, we're set there, you know, knock on wood, because obviously injuries can change things, but we feel we have you know, a really good – foundation for now and the future with our pitching so that's one of our strong suits obviously our hitting has not been the best at this point you know we've had injuries to Riley Green that was supposed to be on the team right uh, but at the same time at the major league level we've got guys in the prime of their careers you know Gabriel Candelario was has been our arguably our best hitter for the last two years in a row you know Javi Baez is a World Series champion all-star player that, you know, we know his history. He's in the prime of his career. Jonathan Scope, the same thing. He's been one of our better hitters the last two years. Uh, he's in the prime of his career. Austin Meadows, a, a proven 30 home run hitting guy. You know, he's in the prime of his career. So there's some really guys, there's guys here that are, are here to win now, and they still have a future because they're in the prime of their careers. That mixed with some of the young players that we have coming up that are, that are you know, that we had some injuries like to, you know, Ryan Kreidler, obviously, that, uh, you know, it, it hurts us a little bit, but at the same time, there is a foundation. There's a nucleus of players here at the major league level and at the minor league level that's going to, you know, sustain us for success for a long, long time. Now, we've got to get out of this hole that we're in, and, and I know we will, and then the future should be bright.
plus the incredible leadership guys like Grossman and Barnhart and Haas and so many different guys who have kind of taken that mantle. Right. Al, one of the toughest things I imagine in your job, in your business, is trying to look at a young player today, where he is right now, and predict where he will be in the future. Can you talk about how you go about doing that? Definitely. That is the hardest uh, job. <clears throat> and it starts really at the amateur level in, in the draft, okay? Because you're not to mention in Latin America when you're looking at them at 15, 16, 14, 15 years old. So, um, you know, you look for, for the basic qualities, okay, that so we call tools, okay? How, how your running speed, right? Your quickness, your power, your, your swing, your hitting ability, uh, you know, your, your arm, um, your mechanics, okay? How are your swing mechanics? You know, people always ask me about Miguel Cabrera, which is a great example, okay? You know, where did you see in Miguel Cabrera? Well, Miguel Cabrera's swing today is the same swing that he had when he was 15 years old, all right? He had, a, he, had, he had a powerful body. He had a perfect swing. He had a great advanced approach that he could make good contact on a consistent basis. So these are the things that you're looking at from an early age on. And it's no different when you start looking at a player in the minor leagues, a player in college, or a player at the big league level, all right? You know, you've got to look at age because as players get older, you know, they don't run as fast. They don't throw as hard, you know? The, um, uh, you know, the hand-eye coordination, you know, starts to fail. So you have to, you know, weigh in the age of that. But really, the, as far as evaluating a player, those are the basic things that you s that you do that from early on all the way through the major leagues. All right, last before we let you go, AJ, the really challenging stretch, 19 games in 17 days that started against Pittsburgh. You have the doubleheader against the Pirates. You get a doubleheader yesterday against Oakland. Still have Baltimore coming to town. Then you go to Tampa with this team. Uh, wh what is the hardest part about keeping guys fresh during such a long stretch like that for a manager? Yeah, no, it's hard because you want there, – there's there's a couple fronts on this. One, you want your guys to get consistent playing time in order to start to, to get into rhythm and timing of the season and get to playing better. Um, at the same time, you run there until their gas tank's empty and you're going to be playing catch-up for a lot longer than just a game or two. So, you know, I will say we're going to need our whole roster. You know, we're going to need some guys come up from the minor leagues that – we're seeing the start, the start tonight. Alex Faedo's made a couple starts. Um, we've seen the shuttle go back and forth. We're very fortunate to have Toledo close by. So, um, but but you you got to keep these guys fresh, and you got to you know my job, and my coach's job is to find little cues that tell us that a guy needs a little bit of a day off. These guys will never want a day off. Um, they want to keep playing every day because the only way you get better, and the only way that you get back to having success is by playing. So. Um, I'll sprinkle in an off day. We're going we're gonna to try to control the volume of their work. I think it's 40-some games in 42 days. Um, it's going to be there whether we like it or not. So we'll take the right approach, control it physically, give a day off when I see them you know, needing, needing a little refuel, and we need the rest of our bench doing well. Um, guys that we don't talk about a ton, Harold Castro, Willie Castro, um, Eric Haas, we're the guys that, are, that have been, had roles on this team, um, we do need everybody to play well, especially when you start giving some of your – middle of the order guys the, the day off guys thanks very much appreciate it very very much and aj good luck tonight appreciate it. want to introduce a few new tigers to our town and to you hopefully you've watched them they're fun to watch they're exciting to watch he's an ace he's won a world series with the boston red sox eduardo rodriguez Gold glove, gold glove catcher in Tucker Barnhart. Austin Meadows had 27 homers, 106 RBIs for a division winner last year in Tampa. Austin Meadows is now a Tiger. And probably the most coveted left-handed reliever in free agency. He came here on a two-year contract, Andrew Chafin. Fellas, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Austin's a big dog lover. He and his wife have two golden retrievers. Yes. The other one's the, the new one's tough. The the, the new it's one's going tough. Well. Yeah. Well, why why two when there's only two of you and you travel as much as you do? Uh, you know my wife. She's she likes to travel a lot, but when she's home, she gets to hang out with both both dogs. And you know we had a girl and. I kept arguing I wanted a, a boy, so, uh, you know, be able to have him as a, 
you know, have him there. And uh, for me, myself, selfishly, have a boy. But, you know, for her to have both dogs and take care of them has been good for her. All right, obviously. His younger brother, Parker, is in the system. He's had a really nice season. How do you help him navigate a, a professional baseball career? And, and how much do you keep tabs on him and vice versa? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, it's pretty cool to be in the same organization. Uh, but continuing to be there for him, you know, I've, I've been through, um, you know, the, the lows and the highs of the game. Uh, continuing to be there for him, um, you know, and obviously he's had some success um, at an early age, and I'm just excited to kind of be in the same organization and kind of show him the way, and I'm um, just excited, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get, get to, you know, be able to get to play together um, up here one day, and I think that'd be pretty special. Eduardo, this one's for you. I, I uh, admire the fact that even though the month of May wasn't exact, or excuse me, the month of April wasn't exactly what you'd wish for, like Matt said, you're a former world champion from Boston. You had a great outing your last time, nothing to show for it. Talk to us a little bit about what pitchers have to do when the offense isn't really clicking the way we expect them to and hope that they will eventually. How do you handle that, and what do you tell your other former uh, or I mean, pitching I feel, teammates? I feel like for me, um, you just go out there every every five days. You know, like that's the, my my mentally. When every time I go out there, just try to keep the the scoring, um, the score of the last round that they can, you know, I mean, two, three rounds is always good. I mean, always as a starting pitcher, always looking for a quality start every time you go out there, you know, and I mean, they just believe that you're going to score runs every time, you know. That's the that's the way I'm thinking all the time. Go out there uh, and keep the, the run like it is all the time. Even if I give you four runs, I'm going to go out there and, and keep bowling until the manager um, let me stay out there, you know, I mean, because my job is keeping the run runs like that and, and let the other hitters do their job. That's the way I see it all the time, you know. You, you could have gone to a lot of different organizations. Why Detroit? I mean, um, like I said, uh, when I signed the contract, uh, for me, it's just uh, this is a team that I start building now. They just say, um, and, I'm, and I want to be part of the, this organization that they start building now to, to win a championship. And, and I know that's what they want, and that's why, that's why I'm here. You know what I mean? Especially they have a lot of young starting pitchers over here that I can help. I'm, I'm always open for them. Uh, any questions they have, whatever they, they want me to, to do for help, then that's, that's, why, that's why I'm here, you know. The, the first move Al Avila made in the offseason, he traded for Tucker Barnhart, brought over from Cincinnati um, as a gold glover. Tucker, when you got that news, uh, what was your thought? Because two iconic uh, organizations with the Reds way back in the big red machine, and of course the Tigers of the old English D. Yeah, super excited um, to work with a young group of guys. Um, initially, at that point, Eduardo wasn't a part of it yet, um, but just Really happy to be a part of a group that's building towards uh, winning and uh, just do anything I can to uh, help the team win. This one's for Andrew. Andrew, uh, obviously we're, we've all been around uh, teams and players that uh, aren't exactly built and designed the same way. Uh, you carry a unique personality to this ball club, and yet for a lot of us really admire that because not everybody should be the same and that when we can bring out the best in each other, that's when we are at our best. Talk a little bit about your philosophy. I've heard you say that you don't think too much about baseball when you're not at the ballpark, and you still have the ability to focus when you are. Talk about that. I don't know. I just like to keep things simple. I mean, I go out there. My job is get the hitter out. I don't care if it's a line out, strike out, ground out, whatever. Just make the best pitch I can when I can, and whatever happens, happens. I mean, once the ball leaves your hands, it's out of your control, so just – do the best you can while the ball's in your hand. After that, just hold on for the ride. <laughs> is, is anybody out there a do-it-yourselfer at your house? Anybody out there at all? Okay. Andrew Chafin is a do-it-yourselfer. Some of the things that you guys have built, some of the things that you have rebuilt, you uh, share folks some of the pictures you showed me the other day that I was just blown away with, like the chicken coop <coughs> that is portable. Well, it's just a standard chicken coop on wheels. It's 18 <laughs> foot long, 8 foot wide, 8 foot tall. I can put about 60 birds in there and little boxes on the side. I've rebuilt multiple vehicles. Uh, took an old CJ7, got rid of the body, built like a, you know, just custom tube chassis thing on it. Ended up trading that for a four-wheeler that, it, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, a couple years ago I took a uh, jet ski, ripped the engine out of that, put it in a John boat. Um, now I got a 14-foot John boat that'll do 40 mile an hour. It's fun. It's a different way to fish, isn't it? Yeah, you get there quickly. It's a fish but, but, By the way, the chicken coop, it's got a metal roof on it. A metal roof. I mean, look. On his 
better than some of us in this room. Well, you forgot to mention it's insulated as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> Keep it warm. Tucker, I, I have to admire your defensive ability behind the plate. As a guy that threw balls in the dirt intentionally, trying to get swings and misses, you have an innate ability to react to a baseball quicker than most guys I've ever seen. Is that something you take pride in and work on extremely hard? Your manager has said, a kind of a two-fold question. Your manager has said, a catcher does a good job when he calls a win and gets a hit. Part two of the question, what's more important for you? Well, I'll answer the, the last question first. Uh, it's the win for sure. There's no doubt about it. Um, the shutout yesterday was cool. Uh, that's the, the, best, the best game in my opinion. I mean, getting hits is fun and everything, but I was always told that you're the last line of defense on the field defensively, and I take a lot of pride in that. To answer your first question, um, I work on it a lot. Um, it's just, for me, it's about the trust. It's about building trust, and the biggest compliment I can get on a baseball field is knowing a guy can throw a ball on the ground if he needs to, and it's going to get blocked. So I work on it a lot, and I take a lot of pride in it, yeah. What's really amazing, he was telling me a story the other day. He watches a lot of MMA and boxing to help his breathing that allows him to block pitches. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, it's just at this level, you kind—I think you're always searching to to get one percent better. The old, all the old cliches you want to use, just trying to figure out what the separators are. And for me, it's the it, it, when it comes to blocking and hitting and throwing and all that stuff. A, a lot of breathing, I think, really works. And so, I talk to um, or watch a lot of video and talk to a guy uh, this off season about breathing and watching MMA and boxers and why they breathe and how they do it, and to me, it's just kind of, ex when you're blocking the ball, you're accepting the fact that it's gonna hit you and try to breathe through it, so. I talked to my wife about breathing through childbirth, so there you go, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> As a father of four, leave that one alone, will you? No doubt, no doubt. Uh, lastly, for Austin, you don't have a problem hitting lefties, and it's, AJ has constantly talked about your calmness in the box, the fact that you are, that you're very comfortable. Where does that stem from, uh, especially in a lefty-on-lefty -lefty situation? Well, first off, I think facing facing Eddie last year, getting 17 pitches over in the, the playoffs kind of helps me <laughs> see a little bit more. No, but he looked at me right when he said that. But, uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I think just continuing to be aggressive up there, um, you know, and it, it's 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 nice to be able to go out there each and every day and, um, you know, AJ having the confidence in me to keep, you know, keep me in there um, full nine and continuing to, to, to grind out at bats, uh, you know, seeing – seeing lefties before and just knowing that, you know, for me, just having an aggressive approach up there, uh, try to put the ball in play and not do too much. You know, in the past, I feel like I've been trying to do too much and get myself out. So for me, just trying to simplify things and, and be aggressive, but be patient at the same time. And um, so far, it's been going really well. How much do pitchers share, Eduardo, with hitters on their own team about strengths, weaknesses, and what you've noticed in them and what maybe you have uh, to offer hitters? Um, I mean, when I'm in the dugout and they ask me questions about what this guy's gonna throw me and all that, I just I just tell them like, uh, see what see what you can hit. Like I tell most of the time they ask me like, why do you think this guy's gonna throw me? I was like, bro, if you hit the ball the other way, he's gonna throw you inside or something like that. You know, my teams like that. And and as a pitcher, I just I just tell everybody the, the same thing. They ask me, what do you think about this guy? What should I throw? What what pitch? Like fastball or maybe change it down or, or something in something outside. And and I just tell the same. If the guy's hitting the ball the other way, and he liked the ball middle, middle away, you got to throw middle lane or something like that, you know? Honored that you guys are Tigers. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matt, Jack, AJ, and Al. Appreciate it. And uh, while we're removing some of these chairs, I wanted to once again thank the Illich Sports and Entertainment executives and Tiger executives that are with us today for making this day possible. So we've got some time for questions for the players. And uh, we've got a ton of them that have come in from you guys already. So first question, and I think we've got our Mike Wranglers here. First question is going to go to Jamer Candelario. Jamer, you are a switch hitter. How much? extra time do you have to put into your hitting work in batting practice so how do you keep the balance lefty swing versus righty swing in terms of working time on each side um, first of all um, you gotta be you gotta love to switch it you know you gotta love the work you gotta be able to you know 
Switching hitters is not, it's not, a, it's not a easy stuff, but you gotta love it. I think if you put the work the right way and you put the effort, you're gonna be consistent. Cause sometimes lefty you feel right and righty, right handed you feel kind of stumbling a little bit. But when you put a lot of work on both sides of the plate and you know, you take care about two swings um, and put it together where you're, where you're hitting coaches, I think it's gonna pay off and the number's gonna be there if you be consistent. But you gotta love it though. It's, it's, it's gonna be time that you, you said, oh, I just, I'm gonna hit your left hand there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. But if you put a lot of work and you be consistent with, with the two, those two swings, it's gonna pay off in, in the, the right way. Congrats, and congrats on leading the MLB in doubles last year as well. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you, sir. Next question, we'll stay right there for Miggy. Um, what, what a year of amazing accomplishments and milestones, and we're all so proud to celebrate them with you. How surreal has this been for you, and what was it like getting your milestones here in, in Detroit? Uh, crazy. Uh, <laughs> And be a lot of pressure because uh, I wanna hit uh, the 3,000 hit here in Detroit because last year I was not able to do it, 500 home run here. So I will say I gotta do it here in front of Detroit fan, in front of my family, in front of a lot of people been following my career for a lot of years. So it be like a little unreal. Like after I hit 3,000, I feel like take off a lot of pressure on my body. Now our focus, like number one focus, try, try to win it. Um, hopefully we can win more games. I will hopefully we can compete more and be on there and throw around this season. Thank you, Maggie. Good luck the rest of the way. I think we're coming back to this side, Muckle Fulmer. It's been so much fun to watch your transition from starter to reliever and see you dominating in both roles. So what was the most difficult and maybe the most rewarding part of that process? Yeah, I, uh, we good? Uh, I'd say the most difficult thing was uh, not realizing I was able to pitch back-to-back -back days or uh, without four days of vacation. I'm sorry, rest. Um, <laughs> in between starts. I'd say the most rewarding thing is probably uh, just getting a chance to play every day. You show up to the field and, and uh, get your body prepared to possibly pitch that night. If you don't get in that night, there's always tomorrow. Thanks, Michael. Uh, we've got a question from the audience for Robbie Grossman. So first of all, congrats on your defensive consecutive streak that record that you set last night. That was amazing. Um, after a few pretty tough years, yes, please, that was amazing. Thank you. 400 and something games in a row without an error. That's, that's incredible. So, yes. Um, so, here's your question. After a few pretty tough years in the rebuild, it stood out so much when you came in with a command for the strike zone and always put together professional ABs. How much do you pride yourself on doing that? I think that's a huge part of, uh, of baseball is having a quality of bat, um, being able to pass the baton to the guy behind you and, and leave, leave him in a better situation than when you came up to the plate. And I think it's just uh, it's a, it's a part of uh, years of failure and experience of uh, playing at this level and learning what you're capable of doing inside the zone and what sticking to your strengths. Thanks, Robbie. All right, let's switch over here to Eric Haas. Eric, I was there on opening day. It's been a long time since I heard a Comerica, Comerica Park crowd as loud as it was when you hit your game tying home run. So how surreal was that for you as a hometown player here in Detroit? Pretty surreal. I mean, like you said, growing up, coming to the numerous uh, Detroit games, um, just as a, as a kid, um, definitely my favorite opening day memory that uh, I got to be a part of, so it was awesome. Well, congrats, that was terrific, thank you. Oh. We're down here with Spencer Torkelson. Spencer, for every major league player, their first big league home run is a very special moment. So take us back to your first major league home run. What was going through your mind as you rounded the bases and do you have the baseball today? Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a really special moment to get my first big league home run. Um, it was at home against the, the Red Sox. 
Um, and as soon as I hit it, I knew I, knew I got it. So I, I kind of stood in the box a little longer than I should have, um, enjoying it. But uh, I, I just had to enjoy it. I knew I got it. Um, I do have the baseball. Um, this, this great fan um, gave it back to our bullpen catchers that asked for it. Um, shout out to Timmy and, and Jeremy. But, um, yeah. Timmy and Jeremy are good buddies of yours because they could have done something different with that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right. Thank you, Spencer. And welcome. We're going to stay right down here. Derek Hill, I think you're down here. Derek, you are one of the most electric defenders to watch. So what's it like covering so much space at Comerica Park? It's got to be a challenge, but fun at the same time. Absolutely. Number one, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, no, uh, I would say just the most exciting thing about playing in that outfield in particular is just the sheer vastness that you have to cover. Um, it also makes it extremely difficult, but I got some great guys also down there that uh, really helped me uh, do that to the best of my ability. So can't thank them enough. Keep it up with those defensive yes, gems. Sir. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> and our final question is going to Joe Jimenez and Gregory Soto. We're going to tag team you guys here. So we've seen you guys take some real time an effort to start a podcast on the Tigers' social media platforms. Why is that important to you, or is it really just with the purpose of having fun and talking baseball? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we wanted, you know, uh, to have fun with it and just to let Tigers fans to know a little bit more about the Latin players and, and the Latino community of Detroit, you know, that it's we know that it's big. So. Uh, yes, we, we feel really good to do this, you know. And if you fan have uh, any question, you can send a message from Instagram or Twitter, and we will answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you to all the players for having fun with our questions. And now I'm going to turn this back over to Dan Dickerson. Let's hear it one more time for everybody taking part in those discussions. That was really good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Shep. Thanks, Jack. We are now going to meet and greet your 2022 Detroit Tigers. Jimmy? All right. In the leadoff spot. All right, let's meet your Detroit Tigers. What do you say? One of the most successful active managers in the big leagues, he led the Tigers to a 28 win improvement from 2019 to 2021. Your skipper of the Detroit Tigers, A.J. Hitch. A.J. The pitchers, in his first season with the Tigers, he has emerged as a reliable right-handed option in the bullpen, especially when A.J. needs to get a lefty out. Right-hander Jacob Barnes. 27th round pick in 2019, he's enjoyed a rapid ascent through the Tigers minor leagues. He made his major league debut earlier this season. He's made a couple of really impressive starts, especially at Dodger Stadium and in Houston. Right-hander Bo Brisky. The only major league pitcher with 70 or more appearances each of the last four seasons, left-handed pitcher Andrew Chafin. 2016 American League Rookie of the Year. Quickly became one of the best high leverage relievers in baseball. Right-hander Michael Fulmer. <laughs> Rule 5 pick a few years ago. He had an injury shortened season last year, but he is already showing this year he's got the stuff to help out of that Tigers bullpen. Right-hander Ronnie Garcia. Now in his sixth season, we're in the old English D. He was named an American League All-Star in 2018. He's looking strong to start 2022. Right-hander Joey Menez. <laughs> Selected to the American League All-Star team last year, he's emerged as one of the most dominant closers in baseball. Left-hander Gregory Soto. <laughs> Currently in his second season with the Tigers, he had a dominant finish last year. He's off to a great start this year. Right-hander Alex Lang. 
Key member of the Tigers starting rotation last season. He is back this year, and he looks like he's going to be a force out of that bullpen. Right-hander, Willie Peralta. Signed by the Tigers as a free agent this offseason. He's gotten off to a strong start in the rotation. This is a very valuable veteran presence. They call him Big Mike. Right-hander Michael Pineda. One of the best lefty starters in the major leagues. He has started at least 20 games every year that he's pitched in the majors. He was a key member of the Red Sox World Series team in 2018. Left-hander Eduardo Rodriguez. He set the Tigers rookie record for strikeouts last year. He has been dominant in four of his last five starts. One of the best young lefties in the game, left-hander Tarek Skubal. In his second major league season, he's becoming a force at the back end of the bullpen for A.J. Hinch, right-hander Will Vest. Now two folks that are very close to my heart, catchers. The brains of the outfit, no question. Acquired by the Tigers on the first day of the offseason in November, he's one of the best defensive catchers in the major catcher, Tucker Barnhart. Tucker! A product of Divine Child High School, he emerged as one of the top power hitters in the Tigers lineup last year. That's here for catcher Eric Hott. Eric. Now Tigers infielders, he's a two-time American League MVP, 11-time All-Star, seven-time Silver Slugger Award winner, and one of only three players in Major League history with 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, and 600 doubles. Designated hitter Miguel Cabrera. He finished last year tied for the Major League lead with 42 doubles. He's been named Tiger of the Year each of the last two seasons. Please welcome third baseman Jamer Candelario. He's hit 20 or more home runs in five consecutive full seasons and ranked second in the American League with 53 multiple hit games last year. Second baseman Jonathan Scope. The first overall pick just two years ago, he's considered one of the top prospects in all of baseball. Three home runs so far during his rookie season. First baseman, Spencer Torkelson. Your Tiger outfielders, last season he became just the seventh player in Tigers history to have 20 or more doubles, 20 or more home runs, 20 or more stolen bases in the same season. Outfielder, Robbie Grossman. One of the best defenders in baseball last year. He loves going gap to gap in that spacious center field. Truly amazing to watch him go. Outfielder Derek Hill. An amazing pickup at the end of spring training from Tampa Bay. He hit 27 home runs, ranked seventh in the American League with 106 RBIs last year. Outfielder Austin Meadows. He's one of the best contact hitters in the game. He has certainly earned the nickname Hit and Herald, super utility man, Harold Castro. And now in his fourth season, we're in the Old English D. He played in a career high 125 games last season, increasing his value day by day by learning to play the outfield. Super utility man, Willie Castro. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 Detroit Tigers. <laughs>